Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Gunsmoke for the NES, uh, played on a retro USB AVS console. Um, this is kind of weird, I'm staring up into a webcam today, I'm not used to doing that on these Let's Plays. I'm trying to look at my screen, but the camera's up there! For those of you guys that have been watching for a while, uh, you'll notice that I haven't done one of these in a very long time, I think maybe 2014 is the last time I did a webcam video, but uh, yeah, it's back by popular demand, and uh, I think I can integrate the cam into my setup and make it reliable. Um, the reason I stopped using a webcam all these years ago was that it just became very unreliable. F uh, footage would just kind of crap out, uh, you know, the recordings would be corrupted, things like that, and it was just too much trouble, but I think I've got a solution now to where we can get some face cam action back in here, so... Yeah, Gunsmoke is bringing back the, the face cam. Uh, what's actually kind of cool about this game is uh, I had never really played it a lot over the years, and I fired it up last night and actually beat it for the very first time and ended up really enjoying this game. Uh, it is quite a bit of a challenge when you first get into it, but I've learned some strategies over the last several playthroughs that, uh, you know, should be good tips for new players trying to get into this uh, and trying to, you know, beat the game for the first time. I know it is a challenging game for a lot of people, and it's, it's definitely a, a tough game at first um, but there are several things you can do to make your life a hell of a lot easier and so uh, as we go through this playthrough I'll be talking about various tips and strategies and things like that um, that I use along the way so but with that let's go ahead and hit the start button here and jump into it for anyone that is new to this game this is actually a port of an arcade game by the same name developed and published by Capcom uh, the arcade version is much longer it's much more difficult um, but they did a really good job here with the NES version um, a lot of arcade ports from back in the day uh, to NES had a lot of cutbacks or were reworked to fit the NES's uh, hardware um, or to, to better suit the hardware, I should say. And uh, so yeah, with Gunsmoke, you can press B to shoot left, you can press A to shoot right, and then you can press both A and B together to shoot straight forward. I actually don't really use the straight ahead shot. I find it's better to just uh, move in the opposite direction and then just shoot with uh, the button that will shoot in the opposite direction. So it's almost like strafing left or strafing right in a first-person shooter, um, but in an NES game. It's pretty cool. Uh, these POWs right here, they actually kill everything on screen as well as get rid of the projectiles. Uh, money bags give you about 200 points apiece, and your score is uh, currency in this game. So you can actually burn away your score by buying stuff, and this lady right here will actually allow me to buy some stuff. And so you've got four different things you can pick up from her. The shotgun, the machine gun, the magnum, and uh, the smart bomb. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually start off with the shotgun here and burn up some cash. Now, the goal in Gunsmoke is to get through all the levels in the game. Every level has a boss at the very end. Uh, however, there's a sort of a gimmick in play where you have to buy a warning sign. Not a warning. <laughs> I can't talk right now. You have to buy a wanted sign. So the Wild West, you have to buy a wanted sign. Uh, and by doing that, uh, you'll actually make the boss appear at the very end of the level. If you don't have the wanted sign, the level actually loops uh, over and over again, pretty much infinitely, until you get that wanted sign. Um, now, what's cool about the wanted signs is that they're actually hidden within the levels themselves as well. Uh, you don't actually have to buy them, but this guy right here is going to try to sell me one for $20,000 or 20,000 points. And... Um, yeah, I obviously don't have the money for that, so I can't even do that if I wanted to. But my goal is to find the wanted sign in this level itself, which is actually coming up here. So that barrel that I just blew open, there's actually a wanted sign right behind it. So the wanted signs that you can find in the levels themselves, uh, without purchasing them, those are actually hidden. So you basically just have to shoot all over the playfield, and, uh, and, you know, eventually your bullets will stop, you'll hear some sound effects, and a uh, hidden item will appear. Here's another hidden item, this is a blue Yasichi. Uh, there's also red types, the blue ones actually make you invincible for a short period of time, and they're also hidden uh, throughout the levels as well. So notice that this game is actually somewhat chaotic, and there's a red one right there. Again, the red ones give me extra lives, and again, the POWs kill the enemies on the screen. Uh, but yeah, you'll notice that the uh, the gameplay is fairly chaotic, especially for a first level uh, NES game. But uh, I actually bought the shotgun, so I'm going to actually end up using this on the boss. And uh, the shotgun is a very, very good weapon in this game. You'll notice that it just, uh, you know, covers a lot of screen space. And the most useful aspect of it is that you'll notice that there's a shot that goes pretty much perfectly horizontally to the left or right, depending on the way that you're you're shooting, the direction that you're shooting. 
And um, so that's actually very, very useful for enemies that come up from the bottom of the screen. And uh, that's gonna happen a lot over the course of the game. Lots of enemies are gonna be piling up on the bottoms of the screen. Now there are various ways you can deal with those enemies, but having the shotgun and just shooting it left or right and having those horizontal shots just collide right with the enemies is the easiest way to take them out. So Cutter Boomerang, um, every time you beat a boss, uh, you do get some points, which again, points is currency in this game, and uh, you can use that to, uh, to upgrade and whatnot. Now, you do get rifles on the playfield. They actually extend your uh, firepower range, and you can get up to four of them. And I ran into that stick of dynamite, not even realizing there was a stick of dynamite there. So we ended up just losing a life, unfortunately. It's not a big deal, you know. Um, not really aiming for a one life clear or anything like that, but it's not a big deal. Uh, that pickup I just got was actually an ammunition pickup. And uh, so what that does, it actually applies ammo to pretty much every weapon in your arsenal. And uh, for right now, I think I still just have the shotgun. Now, if I was using the shotgun when I rolled over that stick of dynamite, I would have actually lost the shotgun when I respawned. Um, so one strategy in this game is if you think you're gonna die, press select, pull up your menu, and then switch back to your normal gun and you actually won't lose anything. Uh, which is nice. So, uh, and just like I said, I'm gonna actually, you know, you know burn my money on weapons and whatnot. Uh, so the Magnum is 20,000, the Smart Bomb is 8,000. The Smart Bomb is really interesting, actually, if you select it, and it actually says I have zero. I might have to buy another one or something like that. I'm not really sure how that operates. That actually happened to me on my last practice run as well. I buy the Smart Bomb and it switches over to zero for some reason. Um, but uh, if anybody knows why that happens, let me know. So those uh, those skulls down below, um, they actually slow you down. So I do not want to pick those up. Um, so you can pick up boots just like you can pick up rifles. Rifles, again, extend your range. Um, the boots will speed you up and uh, the skulls will actually slow you down. And so what I'm gonna do here is actually buy uh, the ammo. Basically what that does is give you uh, a lot of ammo back. Machine gun can actually go up to 400 bullets, uh, so it doesn't give you, you know, complete ammunition back, uh, but you should be able to buy most of, or, or multiples of them. Alright, so I picked up some more boots, and I got uh, more range as well. And, uh, just kind of taking my time here. Now, the, the wanted signs that are available in the levels themselves, or hidden in the levels themselves, they have a tendency of being towards the end of a stage. Um, so as you get close to the end of the level, uh, that's when the wanted sign will probably appear. And, uh, again, if, you know, I don't actually know exactly where all the wanted signs are. I kind of have a general idea, but I know that most of them appear towards the end of stages, and so I just constantly just fire around. They have a tendency of being near other power-ups as well. They're usually huddled next to, to other items that you can get. And for the machine gun shot here, you can sort of just like tap your shot a little bit here and there instead of, you know, just holding it down constantly and wasting your ammo. So you can sort of taper your shot. Now, if you pick up the dynamite sticks before they explode, you'll actually get 10 points. So if you're playing this game for score, uh, you actually do kind of want to get the, uh, you know, the dynamite sticks that are on the ground. And uh, so there's a horse. So the horse is actually acts as a shield, which is fantastic. So, you know, that's one way to make life easier. So what I like to do is not buy the wanted signs. And I like to save my money for horses on each of the levels because again, it acts as a shield. It absorbs several hits. Um, and then, you know, once you lose it, you can end up buying another one as well later on down the road. And so let's go ahead and switch over to our shotgun. All right, so now our smart bomb is at one. I'm not really sure why it went up to one. Uh, maybe I had to buy the ammunition from the shopkeeper. Maybe that's why. Maybe it, like when you buy the smart bomb, it's at zero, but then when you you know, you know buy the $14 or $1,500 ammo pack, it gives you a smart bomb with it. So I think we probably just figured something out there uh, during this Let's Play, which is cool. I always like learning new things on the fly as I do these videos for you guys. But what's really cool about the smart bomb, and I can't really demonstrate it right now because I've got the horse, um, but if you have the smart bomb selected, uh, what'll end up happening is is when you take a hit, uh, a bomb will trigger. You won't die, and uh, all the enemies on the screen will get cleared out. So the smart bomb actually acts as a shield, and one strategy I do is uh, another blue Yusichi, and there we go. There's our wanted sign right there. So one strategy I use is if I want to conserve ammunition, 
uh, what I do is I switch over to the smart bomb. It saves me from using my shotgun or machine gun or magnum ammo. And uh, if I take a hit, well, I don't die instantly. So it's, you know, yeah, I have to mash the fire button really fast, which is tough. But, um, you know, it's, it's worth the trade-off. And there we go. I just bought two uh, ammo packs. And uh, so we've got pretty much maximum ammo now. So let's switch over to our machine gun. And for this boss fight, what I'm going to do is probably end up using the shotgun. This boss fight, actually, he shoots out uh, these boomerangs. And the boomerangs are actually a little difficult to avoid. They're fairly random. But what's cool about them is that you can destroy them. And uh, so I have a, probably a greater tendency of actually, you know, making contact with the boomerangs with the shotgun because of its, you know, wide, wide spread. And it's fairly powerful as well. It's not a super weak weapon. It, it actually does some decent damage. So it's kind of like one of those win-win weapons where it's just, you know, it's it's just a, a very well-rounded weapon. You know, it fires out relatively quickly. It's got a good spread shot and it's powerful. So, you know, it's probably the best weapon in the game if you ask me. The Magnum is really nice, but it costs $20,000 uh, and it doesn't carry that much ammunition compared to say your machine gun or your uh, your shotgun. Alright, so the boss fight's coming up here. It actually is a little difficult to tell when you're going to get to a boss because, uh, admittedly, a lot of these levels are fairly samey. And actually, what I'm going to do is actually just use my machine gun here because I actually have a really good chance of hitting this guy. Uh, this guy's boomerangs. Yep. With the, uh, with the machine gun here. And there we go. So you can see that I can destroy his projectiles. And that's definitely one of the tricks here. Now, you do want to kind of keep an eye on these projectiles because they come out in, in very random patterns. They just go all over the screen. So you do have to still, you know, be on your toes when you're fighting this guy. Now, if you do die at the boss, uh, you'll actually respawn right at the boss. But if you've lost all of your guns, uh, sometimes you'll have to fight the bosses with just your default stock firepower, which is kind of a pain, especially if you're like me and you're, you're aging, your hands are hurting a lot, especially when you wake up in the morning and it's cold outside. Uh, this is not a game that's kind to your hands if, uh, you know, if you, if you don't like, if you don't like button mashing. Yeah, actually, when I first started playing this game last night, I was like, oh, geez, am I even going to be able to do anything with this game? Because I had the button mash really fast, and my hands were just not having it. Uh, especially this morning when I woke up and tried practicing this. Um, but uh, it's one of those things where, like, you know, as my body warms up and as I, I use my hands more often throughout the day, uh, it's a little bit easier for me to button mash. But it's still, my hands are actually still sore right now using this base weapon. That is one nice thing about upgrading your guns is that, you know, you can switch over to, say, uh, the shotgun and you don't have to attack as rapidly. I can just sort of tap the button lightly here and there and uh, do just fine. It doesn't really hurt my thumbs or, or my hands. It's not so much my thumbs uh, or my fingers that really hurts, mainly my wrists. Um, yeah, it's definitely an issue that's, that's become more prevalent as I've gotten older. I do find that... Um, sort of carpal tunnel-like symptoms go away when I'm, you know, eating better and exercising more and sleeping better. Um, but I've, uh, not been doing any of that, uh, lately, so, yeah, my hands hurt quite a bit uh, when I play games like these. But yeah, there are lots of tricks you can use in this game to sort of mitigate, uh, physical pain when you're, when you're button mashing. So again, we're just going uh, throughout the level. I'm just trying to focus on the enemies. One other strategy I like to use is to try to stay closer to towards the middle of the screen. I sort of stay in like a boxy area, kind of like a square near the middle of the screen. Uh, you don't want to get too far to any side or the bottom of the screen because enemies will just side swipe you. And uh, that's probably the most common way of dying in this game. But because I'm going to find the wanted sign in the level itself, I'm not going to spend $50,000 on it. I don't even have the money if I wanted to. I'm going to buy the horse because that makes my life easier. Uh, I get the horse. I get several hits I can absorb. Uh, and the horse moves really quick, too. Look at how fast I move across the screen. So it actually makes dodging easier. This is how you make gun smoke easy on yourself. Uh, a lot of people struggle with this game. I think they go through the game using just your basic shot or they end up dying and losing their weapons and um, you know it, they make the game a lot harder on themselves than necessary so you know stay towards the middle of the screen don't hug the sides of the screen uh, you've got you know plenty of room to move around don't get the wanted signs by paying for them you want to get them by finding them in the levels and then that gives you so much more flexibility with you know your weapons uh, your horse 
you know, basically your shield. Your horse is effectively a shield, and um, and because the horse moves faster, uh, you know, you can dodge stuff easier, and uh, so it makes life a whole lot easier. When I first played this game a long time ago, uh, you know, I had dabbled with it a couple times over the years, but I never got past, like, the first or second level. I just, you know, something about it didn't resonate with me at the time, but part of that, I think, was just the difficulty. It seemed like it was a pretty tough game right out of the box. Um, but what I realize now, it's actually, you know, yeah, it's tough if you're just running around slow and, uh, you know, you're using your stock weapon all the time and your hands are hurting because you're button mashing. Um, you know, it's one of those games where you're meant to find out and discover your basic strategies uh, to get through the game uh, much, much easier. So, once you figure out those strats, like a lot of NES games that are challenging, it's, you know, you make the game so much easier. So I found the wanted sign, and uh, so once uh, we get to the end of the level, uh, the boss is going to appear. And uh, this boss is interesting because he actually does a spread shot style projectile. And, uh, oops, see, right there, actually, I, I hugged the right hand side of the screen. And actually, I just took a hit from an enemy because of that. But thankfully, the horse can absorb a few hits. It is actually kind of sad, though, when you lose the horse because it actually keels over dead and you just kind of walk past it. Um, kind of interesting. You don't usually see that sort of thing in NES games, but it happens in Gunsmoke. So I feel bad every time I lose the uh, the Gunsmoke horse. But we should be getting close to the boss fight now. Again, like I said, the wanted signs have a tendency of appearing... I mean, they always appear in the same spot every time you play the game, but they usually appear uh, towards the end of a level. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Magnum on this guy. The Magnum is super powerful. So what I like to do is just save the Magnum for the boss fights themselves. And then I can dodge his spread shot. If I say far back on that boss, and if he's far back, you know, the, the spread goes out quite a bit, and I can just kind of squeeze between the bullets. The hitboxes in this game are okay. They're not, you know, flawless um, by, by today's standards in particular, but, you know, I find that, you know, good-sized spread patterns like what that boss had, uh, it, you can squeeze through the bullets. Um, what I'm actually looking forward to doing is actually firing up the arcade version of this game. Uh, I've played it a little bit on various Capcom arcade collections, um, but I'm really interested to go back to it now after playing a lot of the NES version. Now, from what I understand, the arcade version is a hell of a lot harder, um, but I'll still be very interested to see how it compares and uh, see what that challenge is like. So now you can see uh, some of these guys are coming up from the bottom of the screen. And so what I like to do is switch over to the shotgun. Now, you can sort of bait the guys upwards. Uh, so what I like to do is actually hover more towards the higher end of the screen, let them walk up, and then move down, squeeze, squeeze past them, and then attack them. So there is definitely uh, manipulation to be done in this game. So, you know, I don't want to be going down there and trying to attack those guys right away. I want to hover up towards the top of the screen, and then move down, shoot them from behind like so. And you notice right there, I just tried uh, moving down, you know, as they were coming up. And I, I moved down way too early, and I kind of got myself caught almost, and I had a really good chance of running into one of their projectiles. So I haven't even mentioned it yet, but this is a one-hit kill game. And that's why the horse is really important, and that's why, you know, your smart bomb is also important. So if I switch over to smart bomb, and I, boom, run into a bullet, I don't die. Uh, and all the enemies clear out off the screen. So the smart bomb is really nice. And since I picked up uh, some ammo pickups, maybe that's going to give me another smart bomb. Let's see. So you hit select to bring up your menu, by the way. Oh, there is no smart bomb. I have to rebuy it again. Duh. That makes sense. So that's actually interesting. Now, So now I'm not entirely sure how it works. So you buy the smart bomb. It gives you zero... Maybe I have to buy ammunition, or maybe I have to just pick up and maybe I just have to pick up ammunition on the playfield before I can actually use it. Maybe that's the detail I'm missing. I'm not 100% sure. I know I'm gonna have someone in the comments section correct me. And feel free to correct me or or clarify for me. Um. All right, so I still got uh, 77 ammo on my shotgun. I'm gonna actually switch back off of the shotgun. I'm gonna go to the machine gun. I try to balance out my ammunition a little bit, um, at least between the machine gun and the shotgun. I find that's the best way to do things, because some weapons are better for certain situations than others. Oh, look at that! Another Yashi... 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 
Man, I have such a hard time pronouncing that, especially on the fly when I'm not even thinking about it. Um, but yeah, the uh, Yashichi is a uh, popular, or it was a popular Capcom symbol um, that appeared in a lot of Capcom arcade games for one reason or another. Um, they even appeared in some Capcom console games like Mega Man. Um, in Mega Man, I think the uh, Yashichi actually gives you pretty much all of your energy back for all your weapons. And it looks like I just took a hit with my horse. Uh, because again, I hugged the left-hand side of the screen, which I just said not to do. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I struggle following my own advice. And so now what we're basically going to be doing is just looking for that wanted sign. And there it is, it's right there. Like I said, it has a tendency of appearing next to other power-ups. And I'm going to switch back over to my shotgun since I'm maxed out on ammo for that. And it's right before the boss fight too. And it's very easy to miss it. So, we have to fight a ninja boss here. He actually teleports around the screen, shoots out projectiles that split into a uh, four-way shot. And you can see that my horse is blinking too. It means that he's about to die. So if he takes one more hit, he kills over, and that's pretty much it for him. Until I buy another one. Uh, let's go ahead and use my Magnum. So the Magnum is not an auto-fire weapon. You do have to still mash the button, but it's so powerful. You don't even have to attack very quickly. Notice that it just cuts right through your little popcorn enemies. And there we go, boss down. Pretty easy boss, actually. I don't think I've ever even died at him once. So the prize money is $20,000. I mean, that pays for another horse right there. So unfortunately, you don't carry your horse over from level to level. Um, so you do have to survive a little bit, you know, to buy another one. But it shouldn't be too difficult. If you've got weapons, if you've got am ammunition and whatnot, uh, you should be fine. So I'm going to switch over to my shotgun here just to make life a little bit easier on me. And let's go ahead and talk to this guy. Pick up another smart bomb. There we go. And yeah, it still says smart bombs at zero. So, okay, let's see what happens when I pick up some ammo. See if it gives me a smart bomb. Yep, okay. Okay, we just figured it out. I have to just, you know, pick up some ammunition. That's it. It's interesting. You buy the smart bomb, but it doesn't actually give you a smart bomb. It gives you the ability to get a smart bomb. Uh, that's interesting. So you can actually jump in the water here. You don't actually have to take the bridge. And I am... Now I'm on the smart bomb. Okay. I had to make sure I was actually on the smart bomb. There we go. We just used it because I took a hit. Here's another Yasichi. So with the invincibility Yasichi, the blue one, you can actually just slam into enemies and you'll you'll kill them instantly, which is nice. So uh, you also speed up quite a bit when you're using that, or when you collect that item. And not following my own advice, I hugged the screen. And the reason I hugged the screen is that there were power-ups right there, and I was just I was gonna run right into those power-ups. But so you got to be very very careful with the sides of the screen in this game. So you can actually get up to four lives, and there are extra lives in just about every level in the game as far as I can tell. And I just died again because I hugged the top of the screen and an enemy just landed right on top of me. But one thing that's nice about this game is that, uh, you know, there aren't, you don't get sent back to uh, checkpoints. So you just kind of respawn right back in. Uh, you sort of get a fresh start in a way with the enemy spawns and whatnot. And there's another extra life right there. So again, if you are playing for points, you do want to pick up these dynamite sticks. Um, and one interesting thing about this game is that um, the game actually loops uh, three times. So, you know, you can actually beat the game up to three times. And um, after that, the game actually ends. You can't, you can't go through the game anymore. Um, so if you're actually playing for score, uh, you do have to actually beat the game three times uh, if you want to try to maximize your score. So, uh, the reason I say that is that picking up the Dynamite Six will actually factor into your overall score eventually, because, uh, you know, the game just caps. And that is assuming you're not intentionally looping the levels. Now, now that I think about it, maybe it's not that important, because, you know, someone that's gonna play this game for score is probably just not even gonna... <laughs> they're not even gonna actually try to go through the game, they'll probably just loop the first level endlessly. Um, although I'm not sure how fast that would be, you know, to build money compared to actually just going straight through the game. Um, but never mind. I thought I was on to something there. Like, hmm. So pick up the dynamite sticks to really maximize your overall score. But actually, you know, in hindsight, it's it's pointless. 
ironically. All right, so let's go ahead and talk to this guy right here and um, pick up whatever weapons that I'm missing. All right, um, let's switch over to our machine gun just to make my life a little bit easier. So again, you see that my horse is blinking, so he's almost dead. Another blue Yasichi right there. Let's go ahead and pick it up. Now I'm wondering if I've already looped the level already. Um, this is looking very similar to actually an area that we died at earlier. Let's go ahead and use our shotgun. Yeah, I feel like the level's looped already because we got another extra life. We had gotten one there earlier. We're back up to our maximum amount of lives, which is nice. And let's go ahead. Can I buy another horse? It let me buy another horse. Very nice. And actually, what I probably should have done is actually just bought the wanted sign because I'm not entirely sure where I am, uh, you know, in relation to the boss fight. Because everything is just looking very samey. So I can't tell if I've actually looped already. And if I just missed the wanted sign. So the next opportunity I get to actually buy the wanted sign, I'll go ahead and do it. Because I've earned a lot of cash. Even if I have to pay forty dollars or $50,000, it's not really a big deal. And we got more range, even though I think we were already maxed out. It's not really a big deal. And actually, I think it's right here. Yep, there it is. Okay, so we're good. We didn't actually loop. It's just that the the level kind of like re repeats itself visually, so it makes it look like you looped. Some levels are like that. Let's go ahead and switch over to our Magnum. All right, so with this guy, he likes to shoot these bombs down the screen, and so the best way to avoid him is just to try not to cross paths with him. Just try to shoot him from a distance, and then move out of the way if he, if he tries to dive towards you. And if you do have to get in front of him, just keep moving to the other side. Don't sit in front of him. It's when you sit in front of him that you will die. Especially if you're on foot. If you're on foot, it's really hard to avoid his bombs that he tosses out. Um, but again, this is why you want to find the wanted signs and the levels themselves so you can save your cash and then buy the horse and then the horse makes these bosses so much easier because you're like two or three times as fast. Um, you're much faster with the horse than you are even with your maximum amount of boots that you have on hand. So this is actually our final level, Wingate. And uh, this is actually a tough level. Um, this level actually gave me some trouble when I first got here. I had to continue multiple times. One nice thing about this game is that you do get infinite continues. So, you know, it's not one of those games where, you know, you get three game overs and then uh, you're kicked back to the, uh, the title screen. It's not like that, so... Um, you can just practice these levels over and over. One thing I did when I first started playing this was I would just intentionally kill myself, you know, if I took too many hits or, or, or died too many times, I mean, and um, I would just practice the level over and over, which was nice. So it actually helped me out a little bit. Interesting little trick here. You actually don't get crushed. Um, if you actually sit and, and try to get crushed, the game will actually push you over uh, back out into a, uh, an opening, which is nice. A very nice... Uh, design mechanic. A lot of NES games, man, if, if you got crushed, you would actually die in the game. And, uh, so, yeah, that's one frustrating aspect of many NES games that you just don't have to deal with in this game. And sometimes you can even use it as a strategy. Uh, I've actually used it as a safety strategy sometimes, where I intentionally get into a corner, enemies kind of come after me, uh, and then I just get pushed over, kind of like this. Boom! I just kind of, like, appear past them. So, it can actually be useful in certain situations. Now, on this level, you do have to watch out for these uh, these grave markers. Um, both the crosses, the wooden crosses, and the, uh, you know, the blue, blue tombstones. 
go ahead and switch over to a better weapon. Let's go ahead and use our shotgun. Again, shotgun, I think, is the most well-rounded weapon in the game. And there's another blue Yasichi. And I don't want to pick up the skulls. And again, the wanted sign on this level is going to appear near the end of the level, just like it has uh, previously on most other levels. So let's go ahead and uh, grab some ammunition. And the horse, and if I wanted to, I could buy the wanted sign here, but... There's, there's no point, because, like, you know, I'm going to just get it in the level itself. So, it, like, buying the wanted sign is not mandatory, and that's something that players have to keep in mind. Um, I think there is actually a misconception, uh, where some players I, I've seen think that you have to buy the wanted sign, but nope, you can just find every single one. You don't have to buy them at all. And by not buying them, you just, you can serve your money, and then, uh, you can upgrade uh, you know, much more freely, and that makes the game so much easier. Especially if you die. Like, if you die with your, you know, with your, your Magnum, and you really want the Magnum for the boss, well, chances are you'll get the opportunity to buy it again before the boss. And, uh, you know, you might not have gotten that opportunity if you had wasted $60,000 on, uh, a wanted sign. So... So, on subsequent loops of this game, it does get harder. Uh, enemies do shoot uh, faster, so their bullets will go across the screen a little bit faster. And um, they'll also have a tendency of, I think, shooting uh, at a faster fire rate. And I believe this is where our wanted sign is. It's a fairly unique uh, tombstone layout. So there we go, it's right there in that corner. Now rem remember, you can get caught, but you actually won't die. I'm actually kind of interested how this will work. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it just clips me out. That's what I figured. Yeah, it's, the game seems very consistent at that, so it's like it seemed like a deliberate design choice, which is very interesting. Again, a lot of NES games would just you get crushed and you're dead. So, King's Knight, anyone? <laughs> and so we're getting close to the boss fight here, and let's actually switch over to our machine gun, just so I can build some ammo for my shotgun again because the shotgun is a really good weapon. I like to use it. Uh, it's got good range, it's good power, and uh, it's good for just kind of like poking at enemies too, like getting a shot here and there. Because of its relatively decent strength, you know, even if you're only colliding with the enemy um, with, with your shotgun every now and then, uh, you're still doing decent damage, even though it doesn't seem like you're gonna be doing decent damage. Alright, so this is actually a two-phase boss fight. We actually have to fight two guys here, and they both basically do the same thing. And what I like to do is kind of get to the side, move upwards a little bit. You notice that their bullets sort of home into where you are, or they sort of target where you are on the screen. And there we go. And again, try to stay off the sides of the screen, especially in these boss fights. Uh, but my machine gun's about to run out, so let me use my magnum now. And the Magnum is fantastic against regular enemies. It's just very, very powerful. I mean, very powerful against bosses, too. But it's especially good uh, on groups of enemies, because it cuts through multiples. And there we go! We just beat Gunsmoke for the NES. So, yeah, that is, uh... Gonna do it for me, guys. That's, uh... I mean, I, I want to say it's a decently smooth run, but we did die several times, but, you know, you get so many extra lives over the course of the game, and, you know, if you don't buy your wanted signs, you can get upgraded really quickly again, and, uh, yeah, I think it was still a decent run overall, especially considering I just learned the game last night and learned how to beat the game last night, so, um... But yeah, Gunsmoke's a really fun game. Uh, if you guys are new to this game, or if you've played it, but you struggle with it, hopefully you learned a few things here, and uh, hopefully you fire the game back up and decide to give it another go, because it's a really good game, actually. I, I could see this being uh, one of my favorites uh, when it comes to shmups on the NES. One of my new favorites. So, yeah, very cool game. If you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, as always, uh, post them down below. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I've got a ton of Let's Plays here, and, and many, many more to come. Uh, for everyone already subbed, thank you for your continued support. Hope you guys enjoy the webcam, and uh, I guess until the next one, 
take it easy.